Good evening. I'm Bob Baldacci, and welcome to Baldacci on Business. Uh, hopefully, our, you, our audience, has had a chance to see our shows from last season. And each month, we would feature a main entrepreneur who will come here and make their pitch before our very esteemed panel of experts. And uh, we continue that tradition with our new season, which we're launching tonight with uh, Christopher Lalleman uh, from Auburn, USM graduate. And, uh, but before, Chris, we introduce you and your, uh, your business concept, I would like to introduce our panel. So on my uh, immediate left is Mr. Hugh Stevens, who's the director of the Knowledge Transfer Alliance at the University of Maine. Uh, Hugh, you've seen him on our other shows. He is uh, an entrepreneur in his own right, uh, owned and operated his own business, manu a suit manufacturer in New York, and uh, is, brings a lot to the table uh, as an individual and uh, on behalf of the University of Maine. And to Hugh's immediate left is uh, the very well-known, very good friend, Mr. F. Lee Bailey, who has given so much of his time and talents to the state, uh, to uh, businesses and nonprofits, and has taken time every month to, uh, to be here as part of this panel. So Lee, uh, thank you very much for all you do and have done. Don Gooding, who is the uh, Executive Director of the Maine Center for Entrepreneurial Development, uh, which runs the Top Gun program. Don is also uh, a very active investor, is uh, Vice Chair of the Maine Angels, and uh, has a phenomenal background in the technology space, would that be fair to say, Don? And uh, is not afraid to write out a check, uh, as I've seen many times. And finally, our good friend Alexander Hamilton <laughs> Spaulding. <laughs> Sorry, but he is a direct descendant. He is a direct descendant of uh, the first Secretary of the Treasury, uh, Alexander Hamilton. But seriously, Sandy, uh, as I like to call him, and his friends and family call him, uh, is a good, good friend, uh, is a principal with uh, Sea Glass Capital, is an advisor to many main businesses, uh, former president and CEO, CEO of Hinkley Yacht Company, and uh, currently running uh, uh, a yacht service called Barton and Gray. Is that correct? Barton and Gray Mariners Club. Mariners <laughs> Club. <laughs> And uh, Sandy had suggested, and I think it's a great idea, uh, we have kind of have the entrepreneur on one side and our panel on the other. And I want to just encourage you, the, the audience, uh, to listen to what's being said, listen to what's being presented, and to become part of, the, part of this process. Uh, to uh, feel free to contact the entrepreneur if you have an interest in helping him in any way. Open up new markets or even write a check. So in no way do we want to limit this to our esteemed panel, but we want to open it up to you as well. So you'll have uh, contact information for our entrepreneur, for Christopher, and uh, feel free to contact him. And uh, again, this show will be aired continuously through the month, is uploaded on YouTube, and uh, it's just a great, a, a great resource. Uh, we, we've had people uh, contact uh, or sign up or register on YouTube for any number of shows that we've, that we've been running. So again, Christopher, thank you for uh, your willingness to, uh, to make your pitch to our panel. So have at it and thank have you. fun. Go um, ahead. Little background about myself. Uh, I recently graduated from Don's Top Gun program and this is not my first foray into the entrepreneurial space uh, back in 2010, uh, my business, uh, a former business partner of mine, and I launched uh, DealsInME.com, which was uh, like Groupon. If you have heard of Groupon, it was Groupon before they came to Maine, and uh, then we partnered uh, with Maine Today Media, who ultimately ended up buying um, our company and our technology. So I had a uh, my first exit from a technology company at 25, which was pretty exciting. Um, so with that said, today I'm going to talk to you about MyFilter.com. Uh, I want to talk about the product, then I want to talk about what is so great about it and what differentiates us from our competition, uh, where we are, and then what we need to get to where we want to be. So MyFilter.com is uh, a discovery platform 
for the best blog posts recommended to you based on your personal interests and preferences. So what does that exactly mean and what's the problem that we're trying to solve? Well, right now there are about 200 million blogs on the internet and every month about 10 billion blog pages get viewed. So that is a lot. That is information overload. But it also means that there are 200 million people writing some of them are probably writing great content. And some of them are probably writing content you would be interested in. But with 200 million of them and 10 billion pages being viewed, it means it's also probably impossible for you to find that, that information that's really relevant to you. So that's the problem that we're trying to solve. We want to bring the content creators together with the content consumers. We are focusing in on blogs because we see that as being the future of media and content uh, production, uh, creation. Uh, it has the, the shift has been made from traditional editorialized content to more, uh, you know, homegrown, local, uh, or expertise-driven uh, content creation. So, what my filter does, and this is an example, though you can't really see it that well, my guess. Um, Our viewers can, I'm sure. Perfect. Is uh, so. This is a picture right here. This is a, a bunch of of beer. Uh, blog posts. So what I did is I went on to my filter. I created a filter. This is what we call them. Uh, think of these filters as stations on Pandora. If you've ever gone to Pandora.com, you type in an artist's name and then they, they recommend music to you. I typed in some things called microbrews, craft beer movement, main beers. So I was interested specifically in microbrews and I was interested even more specifically in main beers. So I did this on our system and results came back. And you might not be able to see it, but there are uh, blog posts of reviews of Sebago's beers. There's a blog post up there for main craft beer events. There's another blog post for uh, Black Bear uh, Growler Review. You can't do this anywhere on the internet. You could search for, you know, main craft beer events, or you could search specifically for Sebago Brewing, but you could never create this dynamic list of things that you would likely be interested in based on the, the things that you typed in. The beauty of the product is, uh, even after you create the filter, uh, it, it loads in real time dynamically based on your, your interactions. So as you click on different things, we recommend new posts to you. As new things get posted onto the internet, um, they get shown to you in your filter. So it's real time, it's dynamic, and it's personalized. So that's the basic form of the product. The reason that this is what we consider very impressive and, and you know, going to change uh, the future, if you will, is there are two ways you can really consume blog content right now. There's traditional RSS, which is real simple syndication. It's been around since the 90s, and it has not improved since the 90s. It's the same thing. You have to know who you want to follow. So if you have, like to read the Wall Street Journal, you can go there. You can sign up on, for their RSS, and you will get every post that they publish, which is a lot. So you'll get overwhelmed almost certainly. More often than not, people who use RSS, unless they are real news hounds, stop using it because you get 100, 200 new posts every day and you just can't keep up with that. We're too busy. So the other camp are uh, aggregators. So this would be like Business Insider, TechCrunch, Huffington Post is actually a blog aggregator. And so they take content within an area and they try to editorialize it. They try to become a publication within themselves. So they're specific, which is nice if you have an interest in what they're talking about, but it's still a fire hose of information within that topic area. Uh, for instance, TechCrunch is a tech blog that many people in my space read, but there's a new post every 30 minutes. They just can't keep up with that. So we call these 20th century technologies for a 21st, pro 21st century problem. We are the solution. We are taking social curation. So we recommend only the posts that are highly regarded by everybody else. If a post gets a lot of thumbs down, we don't show it anymore. It's not good. If it gets a lot of thumbs up, it's probably pretty good. So social curation. You don't have to know the blogger because we just recommend it to you. Our algorithm picks individual posts from individual blogs and it shows it to you based on many weighted characteristics. So you don't have to know the blogger, it's socially curated, and it's specific to your interests, so you don't get overwhelmed with content. So we're hitting a lot of these uh, really important pain points that uh, readers of blog content have. Mm -hmm. So that's the product. Where are we? After we graduated from Top Gun, we launched our public beta. And so I see we, I apologize, there's a team of three of us that have been doing this. You're um, doing it full time, Christopher? Part time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we launched our public beta. And it went really well. We had this great strategy that we developed at Top Gun. We rolled it out. We had uh, about 600 people sign up in the first week, which was really 
exciting considering we had zero budget. Um, so that was really cool. Since then, uh, so that was in uh, May, we have added about 600 more users, again with no budget. Uh, so this is one of the things that I want to talk to you about and where I'm looking for some advice and help. What we have done is we have this user base, but our product is, is inherently not viral. So what does that mean? It means Facebook is only good because lots of people use Facebook. If one person used Facebook, it would not be popular. Our site can be used with only one person. One person can find it very useful. But that doesn't mean they're going to tell other people about it. So it's not viral. So we're working on a lot of new things to help increase the viral coefficient and get that network effect that uh, startups really like. One of those things we did, we just launched last week, is an email. This technology is actually really impressive and we're considering even just licensing this technology, is the email sends uh, top five blog posts. A daily email is nothing new. We probably all get them. We're going to do two a week. We don't want to overwhelm people. But each email is specific to the user. So Bob's five blog posts are going to differ from Hugh's, who's going to differ from Lee's, differ from Don's, and Sandy's. When the user clicks on the blog post, we track that. We alter the recommendations, both on the desktop and on the future email. So this is really sophisticated, and we think that this is going to help grow the site quite a bit. We did a beta email last week. We saw a 600% increase in engagement, engagement being measured as uh, cl posts clicked. So with a subset of users, we saw a massive engagement increase. So we're really excited to slowly roll this out to all of our users. That's just part of the puzzle. The reason I'm here today, so the product, where we are, why am I here today, is I need help in digital marketing because we need to find better ways to get more users faster. We really want that hockey stick growth. So I'm hoping for either media contacts, uh, press contacts, or just digital media uh, marketing experts. And the next phase is our mobile app. Mobile apps offer a really great opportunity for fast user acquisition. Our site is responsive. It's totally mobile friendly. You can go on your phone right now and use it. But a mobile app puts your app in one location. Everybody who wants to download an app has to go to the app store. So with the right budget, you can you can promote yourself, and you can get 10, 20, 30,000 downloads a week, which really drives that user acquisition, which then will allow us to test our revenue model. Can't test our revenue model until we have um, a core base of users. Mm -hmm. So we're looking to raise $75,000 to build um, that app with some local vendors here in Portland. We can do it ourselves, but we want people who have expertise in this, who do this day in and day out, and there's some really good vendors here in Portland that do that. We want to promote that app, and then we want to test our revenue, uh, our revenue model. We think by the end of Q1 in 2014, we can have between 50 and 75,000 users if we can get our app into the marketplace by December. So that is where we are. Great job. Uh, Thank you. It's, uh, there are, I have tons of questions, but again, I, I want to defer to uh, the panel here. Uh, have at it. Mr. Bailey? Um, if you attain your objective and get 75,000 users, how does that translate into income? Yeah. So our site, there are several uh, models. There are about 7 million bloggers who make some income from blogging. They don't make a lot, but they make some. Somewhere in the range of $8,000 a year varies. There are about a half a million who make over $250,000 a year. These are professional bloggers. That 7 million all want to get into that half a million group. Our site recommends blog posts to people. Bloggers make money from traffic. So we have opportunities for sponsored posts, sponsored bloggers in general, um, and a lot, of, a lot of ways to sell tools to bloggers at low costs, but they're not going to pay for them unless they see a traffic, uh, an increase in traffic. So we need the users to, to justify the expense that we would be charging. Sandy? Uh, I really understood the uh, metaphor of Pandora, you know, that you've got a filter that can you know, grab these blog posts for my interest, but um, is, is the technology proprietary? Is there something about it that would prevent someone else from addressing the same problem that you've identified? It, it isn't, and we, we discussed this early on for a while, um, met with some, some people, there are actually some uh, people here in Portland who had a music recommendation service with a uh, IP padded protected algorithm. But the algorithm doesn't much matter unless you have traction. It doesn't matter what kind of protection you have unless you have traction. Traction is what we have discussed with all the exports, the best form 
of protection. So somebody could come and do this. And in fact, a lot of people copied Pandora, even though their human genome project was, in fact, patented. Um, so it's not high on our list of things to do just yet. Okay. Can, can you just, somebody who is low-tech oriented but open to high-tech ideas, describe to me the revenue stream? Very simply, so somebody like me could understand it. Yeah, we're going to sell tools for bloggers to help monetize their blog. And that we're going to do that by sending traffic, helping them increase their traffic. And then charging them? Is that the idea? Yeah. Charge the bloggers. Yeah. So one of the really yeah. cool things that we have is uh, when you create a filter, we return a subset of mm -hmm. responses, yeah. things that we think you're interested in. And so if you are on Twitter, you can promote a tweet. And that will go to, you know, you can be really specific. Or Facebook, you can promote your Facebook feed, uh, post. Similar to that, you can uh, pay us to put one of your blog posts at the top of this recommendation. But the reason it's really great is it's not spammy to the user because it wasn't going to be recommended organically. It just may have been recommended somewhere in that list. Now we're going to put you to the top. So it's somebody who is interested in what you're looking at, of what you're creating, somebody who wants to click on it, but now it's at the top and it's highlighted. So it's the same sponsored post model that many social networks have, except for we think that it's even higher value because it will always be in front of somebody who has an implied interest in what you're doing. Does that have layered costs? Yeah. If I want to drive stronger, it's a higher high ticket cost. Exactly. You can Again, I'm simple. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. But not, not but to the user, it's a free app? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There might be like we're doing the email and we think that that can be based on that high engagement right off the bat, we think that there could be an opportunity to say, well, we're going to send this out twice a week as it is. But if you want to have a daily email or set it to like a schedule, then you know that's $1.99 you know, a month or something. We're not really sure. But if it helps save time and it's high quality, we think there might be an opportunity somewhere in there. Yes. Mr. Let's say I run a blog where I report the current status of all ongoing murder cases in the United States. The evidence came in that day and where the case is positioned. And uh, I come to you and say, I want you to increase my traffic. I get paid somehow by the hits. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Yeah, so there are um, a few ways. The biggest is the sponsored posts. We'll, we will put you in our database and say, anyone who searches crime, murder, uh, legal cases, anybody who is looking for information like that, you will show up as a re recommendation right at the top. So we can't force them to click, but we can help just like any other advert. It's, ad it's advertising. You would be paying to advertise, but you're advertising to somebody who has said, I am interested in this content. And what do I have to pay you to get this benefit? An as yet undetermined amount of money. It'll be, it'll be cost per impression. Um, so it'll be We'll, we'll look at the models anywhere between, you know, a dollar to three dollars per thousand impressions. Per thousand impressions. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Have you looked at all in terms of the virality side of things, how you might be able to leverage Facebook when people, for example, give a thumbs up on, of an, on an article or any other methods to really get some virality out there? Yep. So we're in a unique position. Um, some of the popular apps that you're probably from you may be familiar with. There's uh, Facebook, uh, excuse me, um, Flipboard. Flipboard and Pulse. Pulse was bought by LinkedIn mm -hmm. for $90 million. Flipboard has got roughly a billion dollar valuation. These are self-contained sites. They actually take the content from whatever source and they put it in their own site and they, they don't say it's theirs. They say it's from the New York Times, but it's in their platform. We, to make money, because none of these sites make money, none of those apps make money, we send people off of our site onto the bloggers page specifically. We have a what's called an iframe. We have a header. You can you're still technically on our site, but it looks like theirs. The problem with Facebook is say you like it and it says Don Gooden like this post by Mark Suster on how to hire a CTO. And anyone in the Top Gun program might be like, I'm interested in that. They click on it, they go to the bloggers page. They don't come to our site. So how do they give up the thumbs up so you understand to incre increase that um, in your overall system. In, in other words, in order for an article to go up or down, mm -hmm. the reader has to give it an up or down, right? Do I understand that correctly? Yes, that has a lot of weight. If you click on things, that also has an 
that gets weighted too. But yes, what you're saying is correct. Yeah, so, so couldn't that trigger a Facebook post somehow? Right, and so you can do that, and we actually have that functionality. Got it, okay. okay. It just it doesn't drive people to sign up, it just drives oh. uh, traffic. Traffic is great, but sign ups are what? S Sandy, you had a question? Are you looking for other revenue source ideas? Uh, uh, always, as my, somebody who has a way well, of giving uh, money, I'll take it. It seems that a lot of news organizations are trying to uh, drive content to, you know, to their, their, their subscribers, mm -hmm. and uh, being able to search the whole wild, World Wide Web for content that's hot and happening in bloggers, I mean, that must be really challenging. I mean, if your algorithm is that good that it can you know, search the world of bloggers, you know, what's, what's happening now, mm -hmm. I would think these news organizations might want to subscribe. That is. To, to, it's a subscription service. Perfectly. You know, for content that they're showing on their programs, whether it's TV or yeah. their own websites. Mm -hmm. That's do, you, do you have the staff capacity to manage this platform that you've developed? I mean, uh, I, how, what kind of backup do you have uh, beyond, behind the technology, Christopher? Yeah, everything is um, it's very automated. Uh, we like we don't like to do manual work, so yeah. everything that happens is done automatically. If I went on vacation for two months, the site would work fine. The recommendations would go out as would the emails. Um, scalability yeah. comes into you know hardware mm -hmm. costs. Um, our the the cost that it takes to compute a recommendation is fairly substantial, um, and and every blog post that we record. Um, it costs about a half a cent. Mm -hmm. So there is uh, hosting costs to keeping, parsing, and recording that data. But it's, it's no different than other scalability issues. It's just we need more server. So, so how comprehensive is the algorithm or the computers to get all, you know, how many blog sites are you hitting? Of the 200 million, you know, daily blogs, how many are you, you know, sourcing or reviewing? Yep. So it's a great question. Yeah. I didn't mention it in yeah. my pitch. I apologize. Well, we only have five minutes left, and I want to come up mm -hmm. with some summary here and, and okay, where I'll be we want to go. Super quick then. Go right ahead. We only recommend blog posts from bloggers who have been voted in by our user base. So we went out, we grabbed the 50 biggest ones within certain fields because those are popular for a reason. After that, I don't know who, make, who writes a good yacht blog, but you do, so you can tell the system our users voted in if they think it is a high quality blog. So that system is also automated. Um, and that's how we get our blogs. Right now I think we have 1,600 blogs that we recommend from. Okay. So there's two filters. There's one for me as a user and there's one for you creating You can't supply. get in unless you get voted in. So Got it's it. socially curated. <coughs> so it. it's only, we only recommend high quality content. This so is the goal. At the outset you, you uh, <coughs> laid out your background and, and presented your business concept. You also laid out for the panel and for our viewers, what you're looking for in order to move this to the next level. Yes. Uh, restate that, and I'd, I'd like some feedback from the panel okay. uh, as well. And for those of you out there, you've got his contact information. Uh, feel free to connect with, directly with Christopher as well. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, uh, we need media and press contacts. If we could uh, access some of the, ironically, the larger tech blogs, which are their doors are being beat down every mm -hmm. every second of every day. Um, Digital marketing experts. There are many in Portland, but they are all very, very busy trying to put bread on the table. Um, and so it's hard to get their attention unless you are willing and able to pay them the money that you have that they require. We are a bootstrapped organization, so that's uh, challenging. The third thing is about seventy-five thousand dollars for uh, our mobile app development, and then promoting of that okay. mobile app. All right. Any feedback from the panel? Is that a low right? ball number or is that the real number? Seventy-five grand, right? Or is that? Do are you, you ready to write a check? No, I just need to know because <laughs> okay. I might know somebody that does. Yeah. All right. We figure we figure it'll be about fifty, and things always cost more of and course. take longer. So I, I just rounded up to seventy-five. Thank you. Lee, comments, uh, suggestions. I think it's an interesting idea simply because we are becoming overwhelmed, inundated, and suffocated. Yeah. With content. And um, if someone will help you pick out the good stuff, I would think the public would go for it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would agree. And uh, Don? 
So I, I think you should talk to Shannon Kinney at Dream Local because she's partnering with newspapers all across the country. So she, she partners with BDN here and a lot of other newspapers across the country. So she'd be, I think, extremely helpful. I can also connect you to the new VP Marketing at Maine Today Media. Mm -hmm. She came up from Massachusetts, open to some innovative ideas, so she might be a good contact for you. Great. Don, thank you that. very much. Don, before we turn it over to Sandy, uh, as a member of the Maine Angels, and I am as well, but do you feel that he is ready to go to the Maine Angels uh, and no. make a pitch? Uh, okay, well, and explain I, I why. I think you need to get traction. Mm -hmm. It's the chicken and egg kind of thing. I think you're still at the point where you may find an individual investor or two who is willing to take the flyer, but I think as an angel group, you have to have a little bit more traction yeah. um, in order to be able to get the group's attention. Yep. And, and Sandy, we just have a minute and a half left, but go right ahead. I can fill that up. I know, but yeah. try to go. No, do no. It. First of all, I just Take want to time. say how impressed I am with your delivery, and uh, you're yeah. very obviously very intelligent young man and uh, cum laude graduate from USM. <laughs> you know, an excellent presentation. I have really no idea whether this could be financially successful yet, but you know, yeah. it, it obviously you have the energy and the enthusiasm to probably pull it off. Uh, I don't know if you've considered crowdfunding sources. This could be something where, you know, you throw it out there and you become a subscriber or you get a t-shirt. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's the level, 50 to 75,000 that crowdfunding sources do use. Yep. Uh, I've started, I'm part of a new company called Launch Angels, which is aggregating crowdfunding deals. We'll just fall into Happy to, like you know, talk to you about that. That's Guys, great. I think I think we're at the end of the show, believe it or not. It just went like that. But uh, thank you all thank very, you. very much. Okay. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you. It's Appreciate been a great it. show, and uh, you did a great job. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. So, congrats. And uh, I think your comments and suggestions were all very good. You think this has some legs? Uh,